Hi, I'm Richard from Electric Classic Cars, and on this week's episode, I'm going to give you a tour of this very special electric Land Rover. Let's get into it. Now, before we get into the details of this car, I just want to give you a little bit of the background of it, because this very special electric Land Rover was a commission for us to build an electric Land Rover for Michelin and BF Goodrich, same company, to, as a promotional vehicle to show off their, their tyres and I believe they're bringing out more and more electric vehicle orientated tyres as well so watch this space but we can't take credit for the actual vehicle itself and the restoration of that because that was done by Britpart and that's what I kind of want to concentrate a little bit on in this episode is some of the knobs and whistles if you like that have been put onto this vehicle so without further ado let's get into that bit now, this Land Rover's got our standard Land Rover conversion kit, which is a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, a Tesla motor, and 60% of it is in the front, 40% is in the back. So it's good weight distribution as well, and lots and lots of power. But I'm not gonna concentrate on that in this episode, because we've done plenty of episodes previously on our electric Land Rovers. Click on the link above if you wanna see one on the kit itself. So I'm gonna shut the bonnet, and I'm gonna concentrate on the rest of the car. Starting at the front, you can kind of see that this is what the Americans would call a fully loaded car, or the British would probably say it's got all the bells and whistles on. Um, so at the front here, you can see it's got a kind of modernized grille. Um, for an early Defender, it's got a, a Puma bonnet on, which is a later bonnet bulge bonnet and that's not because we need that on to fit the um, battery box in it just gives it that aggressive look especially with the terra firma bumper and winch at the front as well so uh, yeah i really like the front look of this car um, let's have a look around the side this is the angle i really like on this vehicle you really get to see the, the aggressive profile of it um, with the exoskeleton cage that the black roof and the black bonnet against the electric blue I think really works well. Um, all these accessories are available via Britpart and Terra Firma who built the vehicle obviously. Uh, I also like the modern sort of touches of these air intakes and stuff and this rock slider. I really like the rock slider but I'm 50-50 whether or not to put it on mine so comments below. Shall I put this rock slider on mine because it would really help to protect the sills which are getting a little bit hammered on mine from off-roading. What, what do you reckon Tim? Add weight, slow you down. Uh, whatever. <laughs> All right, so that's the side profile. Let's have a look at the rear. Now, sitting in the pickup bit at the back, I've got uh, the rest of the battery pack underneath. So there's 40 kilowatt hours underneath me here, 60 kilowatt hours in the front. Um, we've got the spotlights on the cage, uh, spotlights on the front as well. But the thing I really want to show you here, which is something I've never seen before, is this number plate light here has a reversing camera in. How cool is that? So uh, what else we got? We got the NAS step down the bottom and the spare wheel. But I think it's time, Tim, to show them the party piece. What do you reckon? Yeah, let's do it. Let's show them the party piece. Go on. Now, what I love about this vehicle is the fact that it's not just trick on the outside, it's just as trick underneath. And I'm not talking about an electric conversion. I'm talking about air ride. This Land Rover has an auto leveling air ride suspension system and for those that don't know what that is they've replaced the springs from the suspension and they put in airbags so currently I'm sitting in off-road mode and let me show you what it looks like in just normal road going mode So that's a road mode now, if you don't need all that ground clearance and off-road mode. But there's one more mode as well, which I really like, which is pimp mode. Let's go down. How cool is that look? Uh, you can't actually drive it for anybody else that thinks, oh, this will look cool on the road. 
this is, I think it's called show mode. You can only put it this low when the handbrake is on because I believe it's just sitting on the bump stops now. But how cool does this look now? I just love this. It's auto leveling as well. So when you're driving along, not on this mode, but higher up, and you put a trailer on the back and it's kind of like, you know, going down a little bit like that because it's unweight, uh, it's not balanced if you like. Um, it'll kind of auto level it as well. So there's sensors in the suspension arms that if it detects that it's not balanced, it'll pump the rear up a little bit or the front up a little bit. So really nice system. And on the road, I was really surprised at how smooth and like luxurious this Land Rover. Did I just say luxurious and Land Rover in the same sentence? <laughs> yeah. I did, didn't I? That's the first time that's ever so happened. You've, so we've made a Land Rover fast and luxurious. That's weird. And reliable. And reliable. <laughs> What's this? Sacrilege. I'm going to say it myself. Sacrilege. Come on, let's have a look at the interior. Now I'm inside, I'm going to use another word which is never normally associated with a Land Rover Defender. Not luxurious, although it is very luxurious in it. I'm going to use the word spacious because without the clutch pedal here and that handbrake poking into the back of my leg and no transmission tunnel, I actually feel like I've got loads of space. In fact, I'm pretty sure, Tim, you could probably fit quite comfortable in here. I'd like to try it because I normally struggle with defenders because I can't get my knees on the uh, feet and the pedals. L look at my seating position here. It's like laid back. I mean, on long journeys, I've noticed I can put my foot there quite comfortably. And another thing while I'm talking about long journeys is I can use this like armrest, which is normally not a very comfortable armrest because on the cubby box normally, the sponge is very shallow. So your arm is kind of down a bit, you know, you feel like your shoulder's dislocated. But Britpart have got this great, I think they call it the chubby box now, because this sponge is a lot thicker, and it's at the perfect position for just resting your arm there. So a really nice, comfortable driving position. Ignore the steering wheel, because this is not the standard steering wheel we're going to use, or the standard steering wheel is not the one we're going to use. We've got another one coming through. But what else we got in here? A couple of practical things. There's some sill protectors, um, aluminium, just to protect those areas of the car that get hit when you get in and out, and they're actually really useful. Uh, Dashboard-wise, we've got a double-din stereo system here and a lot of buttons on there, which kind of give it a little bit of a modern feel. And that stereo, it's awesome. I'll show you that later with a bit of 80s synth pop for you. You'll hear the subwoofer go in there, Tim. Not my usual musical taste, <laughs> I must admit. But seat, seating-wise, we've got the Corbo seats, leather uh, seats with a BF Goodrich stitching on, and also a bit of luxury, Alcantara headlining. Really nice. Um, and this roof panel, never seen this roof panel before, and it's quite practical. You can put, you know, things up there like sunglasses and stuff. You've got the lights controls up here. It, altogether, this is a really nice, luxurious and spacious interior for a Land Rover Defender. Now, one last thing on the interior, and something I've never seen on a Defender before, and it is electric rear windows. How cool is that? So there we go. The BF Goodrich Electric Land Rover Defender. And the next time you're going to see this, it's going to be all liveried up at some event and some car show that you'll probably see it at. But question to you guys out there. What was your favourite accessory on this Land Rover Defender? Mine is an odd one, but it's that additional sponge-like chubby box. It's so comfortable and practical, and I've never had that before when I'm driving the Defender. But, yeah, which one's your favourite accessory on this? And on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you on the next one.